Pastor Travis here. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us right here at City Church Live. It is such a pleasure to have you guys joining us to worship the Lord together on this Sunday. And man, this one is just so special, right? Because we get to remember the resurrection power, the risen Savior. Amen. Our Lord isn't just uh, stuck in a tomb, but he overcame. He is alive today and he lives. And because of his life, we can have the hope of a promise of eternal life in his name and the salvation and redemption of our sin. Amen. So I'm just so thrilled that you guys decided to join us. It is going to be an awesome day here at City Church as we hear the preaching of the word, the awesome songs and worship. I know our team has been practicing so hard. I am thrilled that you guys decided to join us, but I'm talking too much already. So we're about to start service. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. God bless. Before the beginning of all other beginnings, God is. In a burst of creative activity, God creates the world and everything in it. Humans are designed to live inside of this unique relationship, but they choose otherwise. The law of God is broken, and the heart of God is pierced. But the story isn't over. In the fullness of time, God gives his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Jesus comes to seek and save those who are lost, wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. On the cross, God is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathes his last. But the story isn't over. On the morning of the third day, the power of the living God erupts, breaking through death with the moment that will define all other moments. Perched at the edge of heaven, the angels stand in awe as one of their own rolls away the stone that's guarding the body of Jesus. As if anything, and guard Jesus. He walks out of the tomb alive. He is victorious. He is conquering death and rendering the grave unnecessary. He is living and moving and breathing as only the risen Son of God can. But the story isn't over. We are, every one of us, searching and hoping and longing for life. It's a desire that's been deposited into our souls by the very same God who spoke it all into existence. And it's this exact life that the resurrection of Jesus invites us into. So bring your hopes, your regrets, your successes and your failures. Bring your doubts, your joys, your fears and your dreams. Be resolute and unwilling to settle for anything less than the abundant life of the risen King. Because truly, if the story isn't over, then what happens next might just change everything. Saturday was 
inside Surely it was new Since when has it possible Never stopped you This is the sound of the dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. You called me my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, it's you. It's you, you.
Well, welcome and happy Easter 2022. Isn't it good to be in 222? Come on now. I was reminded this morning just before our sunrise service that two years ago we had planned Easter three different times and had to cancel it three different ways because of COVID. And so I'm just grateful to be on the other side and I wish I had somebody. Well, it's great to see you today. Think about the resurrection just for a moment. You know, if you want to disprove Christianity, all you need to do is to prove that Jesus did not return from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the linchpin to the entire Christian doctrine. If you remove that pin, then all of the other aspects fall apart. The resurrection of Jesus is the single aspect and single element that separates Christianity from all other world religions. Uh, I could take you today to the tomb of Muhammad. He's still there. I could take you today to the tomb of Siddhartha Gautama, otherwise known as the Buddha. He's still there. But I cannot take you to the tomb of Jesus and expect that you're going to find him there. The distinguishing factor between Christianity and all other world religions is the empty tomb. Jesus not only claimed to be God, but he backed that claim up by rising again from the dead. You know, even the apostle Paul, who started out beating and killing Christians, would later have an encounter with the risen Savior. And he would write to the church in Corinth these words found in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. It says, and if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. Even the Apostle Paul, who would ultimately give his own life for the message that Jesus Christ was resurrected. Even he said, if you remove the resurrection, the entire thing falls apart. So I want to look critically this morning at the resurrection. I don't know if you know this or not, but God never asks us to check our brains at the door. Come on, somebody. Huh? He never asks us to underthink. He never asks us to just ignore facts so we can look critically at something that is true. So today we're going to look critically at the resurrection of Jesus. Ill-informed skeptics would say, well, Jesus never actually died. That's the reason that he was able to, quote unquote, come back from the grave. However, there are no serious academics that will support, whether it be in Christianity or outside of Christianity in historicity, that will support the fact that Jesus did not die. 100% of the secular, of the Jewish historians of their day talk about the death of Jesus. It was an an unmistakable fact in history. It is, there is zero records, by the way, because Jesus died from a Roman crucifixion. There are zero records in any history book anywhere of of individuals surviving a Roman crucifixion crucifixion. Not only was Jesus crucified, but prior to his crucifixion, he was flogged. He was beaten 39 times with a cat of nine tails. Now, some erroneously claim that the resurrection is merely a legend, but talk to any historian and they will tell you that legends take between 100 to 150 years to develop. As a matter of fact, 
uh, the emperor, Alexander the Great, his biography was written 400 years after his life. Yet its veracity and its historicity is never questioned in any academic circle. But what you see about the resurrection is that there's not a hundred year gap. There's not a 50 year gap. There's not a five day gap. That the time that lapsed between the event and the story was immediate. And that dispels the logic of some, something that has been built out as legend. Next, you have the issue of the empty tomb. What do you do with the fact that the tomb was empty? The uncontested historical record in and outside of the Bible has a guy by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, a well-known, wealthy Jewish council member who lent his tomb to Jesus. He let Jesus borrow his tomb. You know, it's an odd thing to let somebody borrow, isn't it? You ever have somebody, hey, can I borrow a piece of gum? I don't want it back <laughs> when you're through with it. Thank you very much. And we all have people that are like, can I borrow a dollar? You know you ain't getting that dollar back. Amen. <laughs> a tomb is an odd thing to borrow. Well, Jesus knew that he only needed it for a couple of days. But Joseph of Arimathea, inside and outside of the biblical corpus, the biblical writing, it is well known and not argued at all that he was the one that offered his tomb and that Jesus was in fact inside that tomb. The book of Matthew tells us that the tomb was guarded by Roman guards, the elite of the Roman guards. They would have been the Green Beret of their day, the SEAL Team 6 of their day. The most highly trained, highly feared individuals in that region. Yet the tomb was discovered empty on that first Easter morning. So what happened to the body of Jesus if he was not resurrected? Well, ill-informed skeptics will say, oh, oh, clearly the body of Jesus was stolen. Someone, maybe the Romans, maybe the Jews, maybe Jesus' very disciples stole the body. So let's unpack that for a moment and let's see if there's any logic to it. During this time, Roman emperors were worshiped as gods when they died. So do you think that it would be in the interest of the Roman emperor to steal the body of someone who claimed to be God and fulfilling the words that he said when he said, I will rise from the dead. That would put him in competition with a living God, not being a dead God. Does that make sense? You see, the Romans were the ones that did the execution. So what would that say about their execution abilities if they were the ones that executed him, but he came back to life anyway? So the Romans do not have any motive for stealing the body of Jesus. Next, the skeptics say, well, perhaps it was the Jews. Well, the very reason that Jesus was killed was because Jesus claimed to be God. He claimed that he's going to come back in three days. So if it was the Jews that stole the body of Jesus, then don't you think after the church exploded in growth, 3,000 people joining the church in one day. Don't you think after that explosion of growth, they would have drugged the dead body of Jesus out into the streets and said, look, this whole thing about Jesus being resurrected is a farce, it's a lie. Here's his dead body. So the, the Jews had zero motive to steal the body of Jesus. Now that leads to the disciples. Well, some could argue the disciples had motive, but they did not have means. We're talking about teenagers taking on the most elite force in the world and living to tell about it. They did not have the means to disable the guards, to even move the rock that was in its place over there. And even if they had the means, even if they pulled off something incredible, do you know that 100% of the disciples 
that were alive at this point. Judas had already killed himself. But 100% of them, with the exception of John the Beloved, who died of old age, the rest of them, the other 10, died for the message that Jesus was resurrected. Don't you think that if the whole thing was a hoax, just one of the 10 would have said, whoa, whoa, right before the ax went across his neck, right before the spikes went in his wrists and his hands, right before they were dipped in hot boiling oil or skinned alive or run through, don't you think that one of them would have said, the whole thing was a a sham, it was a joke. Nobody can take a joke these days. But not one person recounted the story of the resurrected Savior. You don't die for a lie. You die for the truth. And every single one of those men died viciously at the hands of hateful men trying to stop the very message that you're hearing today 2,000 years later. What I'm telling you is that they had no motive to lie about it if they were going to die for it. So where does that leave us? These are the same men, these disciples. they, They talked with him after his resurrection. They touched him. They put their hands in the wounds of Jesus' wrist. They ate with him. They prayed with him. They worshiped with him. They laughed with him. The Bible tells us that 515 people had an encounter with Jesus before he was taken to heaven. Now, skeptics will say, oh, these were just hallucinations. You see, the disciples had been traumatized. So in their wishful thinking, they're having these hallucinations about Jesus. But I don't know if anybody's ever told them, but as humans, we don't group dream. I mean, like, you're never going to hear me say, hey, what y'all think about that dream I had last night? We don't group dream. That's not how it works. We don't group hallucinate. 515 people had an encounter with the living Christ before he was ascended to heaven. So where does that leave us? It leaves us that the Son of God was born through man to redeem and save and set free and rescue anyone who would call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus laid down his life and because he laid his life down, he can pick it back up. And three days later, he picked it back up and walked out of the tomb so that you could walk out of the death that is trying to keep you down and hold you back. What I'm saying to you today is love has risen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Look around. It doesn't take long to recognize the brokenness surrounding us. Division, hatred, fear, uncertainty. The pain we're witnessing is real. And the need for a savior is undeniable. It's this need which broke the heart of God and moved him to do the unimaginable. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son to change our eternity, to be the perfect sacrifice for us. Love on a cross, dying once for all, laid to rest in the darkness of a tomb. Today, as we face so many unknowns, may we remember the simple truth of Easter. The stone's been rolled away. The grave is empty. Jesus is alive. And love has risen.
Resurrection Sunday 2022. Can we stand to our feet? Come on, worship with us.
How many of y'all know that God is our champion? He has risen. He has rose again. Oh. I tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me. Never earn it. You give what we don't deserve. And you take the broken things and raise them to glory. Help me sing it. You are my
Sometimes winning doesn't look like winning. Sometimes a win looks an awful lot like loss, looks an awful lot like death. How many times have you been knocked down? Tempted to doubt when things don't go the way we think they should. You could imagine the disciples' confusion. When Jesus, their king, their champion, he, he was nailed to a cross and died. He seemingly lost, and they didn't know what to do. What you and I often miss, and, and what the disciples didn't see was, was that this was all a part of the plan. Jesus said, no one takes my life, I lay it down. What looked like the greatest loss in history was in fact a, a paradigm shifting victory. Jesus rose from the grave and death couldn't touch him. Sin had lost its power and he was crowned the champion of all champions, undefeated. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, which means his victory over sin is your victory over sin. Your victory over addiction and shame. That thing that you thought was dead in your life, he stands ready to breathe new life. His win is now your win. And this victory reverberates through the centuries, declaring forevermore that he is our champion and he is alive. Come on, one more time, stand to your feet and shout, he lives! Come on, shout to, shout to the top of your belongings, say, he lives!
because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone and I know I know he holds the future Maker pierced, the creator destroyed, the power to save spent not for himself. This is the genius of his cross. Death's signature victory stripped by love's ultimate triumph. Hell's finest hour eclipsed by the dawning of grace. Limitless hope lives again in all who believe. This is the genius of resurrection. The lamb slain so that man no more may die. The suffering servant before whom all will bow. His finished work is the fountain of all new beginnings. This is the way. This is the truth. This is the life. This is the genius of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the king. He's my king. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. 
He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He is the king of glory. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. My question is, do you know my king today? My king is a sovereign king. There is no measure of means that can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's eternally sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him today? He's the greatest phenomenon who has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He is God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be the all-sufficient Savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives the sinners. He discharges the debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know my king today. He's the king to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway to peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He is the gateway of glory. Do you know him today? My Jesus, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I wish I could describe him, but he's indescribable, you see. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind, and you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault with him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave could not hold him. My question to you today is, do you know my king? Do you know my king? Gracious God, we bow in humility before you today. We are in awe of who you are and in awe of your love for us, broken, incomplete, imperfect people that we are. Knowing everything about us, you gave your life anyway so that we could be rescued, so that we could be redeemed, so that we could have eternal hope. Almighty God, in this sacred moment, I pray you would enter the hearts of every man, woman, boy, or girl, here or watching. And we thank you for that, Lord. I want everyone to pray this prayer with me. You know, the Bible tells us that if we confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And if we believe in our heart, then we will be saved. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of will. You will be saved. Saved from what, you may ask? Well, the truth of the Bible is that I deserve hell. Chris Foster deserves to split hell wide open. But Jesus made a way so that I didn't have to go through that suffering eternally. He suffered temporarily so that I could be free eternally. And all it requires of us today 
is to transfer our trust from what we've been trusting in over to the name of Jesus. Envision, if you will, a boat that's sinking. You're on the boat, 90 miles offshore. And another boat comes alongside of you. The SS Messiah, come on somebody. And Jesus is on that boat and he says to you, look, you need to come over right now and let me save you. Now imagine looking at Jesus and going, you know, I got this. I'm going to be all right. I can pull myself up with my own bootstraps. Probably if I'm good enough, I can get out of this situation I'm in. Probably if I paddle hard enough, I can make it that 90 miles in this sinking boat. But Jesus said, there is no other way. He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Your choice is you can sink where you are and suffer eternally. Or you can transfer your trust and step over into his salvation. It is not just a temporal transaction. It is an eternal place where God gives you a place in heaven. But it all comes back to your willingness to say, Lord, I place my, tr I'm going to transfer my trust. I've been trusting in this sinking boat and I see sharks around and the sun is beating down and I'm out of fresh water. Jesus says, come on over to the living water and you will thirst no more. So everyone here and everyone watching right now, if you will, bow your head and let's pray this prayer of faith to the Lord. Just say it out loud. Just say, Father, I am in need of a Savior. I've messed up in my life. I've made mistakes. I've sinned. And I need you to rescue me. Today I'm transferring from this sinking boat into your boat. Be the leader of my life. Be the Lord of my heart. Save me. Redeem me. Make me whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we clap our hands right now and give the Lord some praise in this place? Hallelujah. Well, hey there, guys. I am back once again, and I would just want to reiterate how much I appreciate you guys being with us for Easter Sunday. What a blessed day it is to come into the house of the Lord and to celebrate the resurrection of our King Jesus. Amen. What a great reminder that we ought to carry through each and every week, but especially on this day. Well, hey, look, maybe you're joining for the first time. Maybe it's your first time in a long time. Maybe you just want a little bit more information about City Church. Well, guys, we would love to get to know you today. So to do that, it's really easy. Just text the word City VIP to the number 94000. When you do that, we will send you a link to fill out a little bit of info, and then uh, we can get to know you a little bit. And in response, we will then send you some information about City Church, what God is doing here, what God is doing through this ministry elsewhere as well, so that you can get to know us. We would love to get to know you today. So once again, that word is City VIP, and you just text that to the number 94000. We'd love to get to know you. And hey, maybe you guys are joining us and you're like, you know what, I need to sow into this ministry. I'm the Lord is leading me to give. We would love to have you guys as a partner with us in ministry. And to do that, you could do it several different ways. One, you could use our app. So you could go to City Church Memphis or City Church Cordova in your app store or Google Play store. And you can download our app, click the giving icon and give securely on your phone. Or you could go to our website, City Church 
live slash give and when you do that you can give securely on your laptop device as well or you could text the word city to number 888-364-4483 and when you do that we will send you a link again and you can give on your phone that way via text so however you want to do it app website text we would love to have you guys support us and be a one of our partners in ministry at City Church. And because of people like you who are willing to give and so into this ministry, we are then able to partner with and support the works of, I think, over 50 missionaries who are working all around the world. So the Word of God is going out to people who can't hear it without the sending of our global partners. And those partners can't be sent without our giving. So when I partner and you guys partner, we're able to see God do wonderful, miraculous things through his word because of our partnership and giving. Amen. Well, once again, I want to say thank you so much for joining us right here at City Church Live. It is a pleasure to have you guys and God bless you this Resurrection Sunday. Hey everybody, I am out here at our Bible school about 13, 14 miles outside of Dhaka City here in Bangladesh. I am standing on one of the greatest tools that we have to reach this nation for Jesus Christ. When Nell and I came back just almost two years ago, we walked onto this campus and I was, I was heartbroken because over the past several years, only a handful of students had actually graduated. But this year, as we came into this year, I was listening to a pastor friend. And he was talking about this being the comeback year. And that really resonated with us. And the Holy Spirit put that deep within us that this is the comeback year for this Bible school. And so we have made commitments to actually move out here. Right behind you, there's a residence building. We're gonna be building a new floor back there so that we can live out here. Uh, and then we're going to be doing all we can to get more students, to gather them up from all over the country so that we can uh, train pastors, we can train leaders, we can develop church planning teams so that what our goal is, is to develop Christ-centered communities all over this nation so that people will have access to the gospel of Jesus. I want to thank you that you're a part of this journey and I ask that you keep praying with us. Pray that, that God will send the students, that we will be able to revitalize this and bring that energy and that life back into this place. We believe the greatest days are yet to come. We're going to keep you involved and you'll be seeing more updates later on, but thank you for praying with us and being a part of our journey.